Namaste everyone, welcome to the class. Today's class dedicated to one of the postures, Upavishtha Kanasana. Today we're going to go through the traditional um, yoga sequences or the postures, as well as a few exercises from the kin stretch, which will help us to isolate the movement on the different joints. And at the end, it will help us to go in the pose, in the key pose today, in a more safe and conscious way. Begin in a seated position, cross your shins in the middle today. At the beginning, try to move your shins slightly more away from yourself and draw your knees a little bit closer to the center. So your feet will end up being underneath your knees. If this position is not comfortable quite yet, you can sit on the blanket or on the block. In fact, I'll suggest you to have one or two blocks nearby today, just in case if you need them uh, for the practice. Relax your shoulders and close your eyes. Bring your attention from the head into the body. Ask yourself, how am I feel right now? What is my experience being in the physical body right now in this moment? Can I stretch my attention all the way to the periphery of the body, to the palms and fingertips? to the feet and the tips of the toes, to the skin. Feeling the space within the body and without. Bring right palm on the top of the navel, left palm on the top of the chest, relax your shoulders while elbows pointing down. Full yogic breath. Inhale begins in the lower belly, expanding it in all directions. Lifting up the chest, up the collarbones, expanding the ribs. And on an exhale, collarbones down, ribs in, lower third of the belly pulled in, engage the pelvic floor. Inhale from the pelvic floor up, expanding everything up all the way to the collarbones. And exhale from the collarbones all the way down to the pelvic floor. Continue the body becoming a vessel. With the inhale, you're feeling it up from the bottom to the top with a breath attention. And with an exhale, emptying it from the collarbones down to the base of the spine. If the ujjayi breath is a part of your practice, start contracting your throat so the breath starting to slow down and deepen. Throughout the practice, we will be shifting attention from the abdominal breath to the thoracic breath, depending on the posture and our goals. But for now, I invite you to experience the full yogic breath, fully from the bottom to the top on an inhale. And from the top to the bottom on an exhale for one more minute. With the next inhale, let go of your breath. Keep the slightly engagement in the pelvic floor, Mula Banha. Engage the third part of the belly, pull everything in and up. Imagine you pressing yourself away from the floor with the seat bones. Release your palms down to the knees. With the next inhale, open your eyes. Reach your arms up, palms or fingertips joined together, look up. 
Exhale, fingertips plant down in the floor, chin down to the chest. Inhale, lift it up. Exhale, down. Inhale, up. Exhale, palms together, palms in front of the chest, look in front of you. Interlace your fingers, warm up your wrists. Few times one direction. Few times opposite. Stretch your palms away from you. Keep the connection between the fingers and reach them all the way up. Three points of connection, lower belly, ribs and the base of the skull. Feel this one line between these three points. Inhale, stretch higher. Exhale, right palm go down. Cover yourself with the left arm, going for the side stretch. Inhale, return. Exhale, change. Inhale, come back. Release your fingertips down. Inhale, reach your arms, palms together. Exhale, release your arms, chin down to the chest. Inhale, lift it up. Exhale, down. Inhale, up. Exhale, palms together to the heart, place, place another pinky on the top, warm up the wrists, reverse, stretch the palms away, keeping the fingers together, reach it all the way up, ribs in, engage the lower part of the belly, stretch the body, exhale, release your arms, twist to the right, look behind your right shoulder, maintain the one line from the seat bones up to the crown doesn't mean that your spine will be in one line, right? It's just about the awareness, one point and another. Your spine will still have this natural curves. Inhale for the center, exhale, change. Look behind your left shoulder. Inhale, come back. Reach your arms up. And as you exhale, palms in front of you, fold forward. So when you're folding forward, try to not help yourself with the hands here, with the palms stay in front of your chest, and you're folding from the hips. So you're moving forward. If you feel you have the stability, you can even extend your arms forward. And as you're folding, notice at which point you feel that it is too much, too intense, and you need to bring your palms down to the floor and relax your head down. Bringing the attention to the back. Inhale slowly with the round spine, lift up. Change the position of your legs, place another shin in front. Again, trying to bring the shins further away from yourself. Reach your arms up. And either palms in front of the chest or right from here, you're folding forward. So when you fold forward here, try to keep the awareness of the pelvic floor, engaging it slightly, trying to arch a little bit in the low back. So you're pushing the chest forward and up, and eventually palms down to the floor, relaxing the head. So our class today, we're focusing on this pose, which looks like it requires a lot of flexibility, but our focus is not flexibility. It is the safe, um, the safe performance of this pose, right? And it's never only about the flexibility. It's also a strength and the mindful movement. When we are not trying to compensate, but the whole body working as whole. Inhale, coming up with a rounded spine, releasing the shoulders and extending the legs in front. Shaking the legs a little bit, you can lean slightly back, staying on the fingertips and circling the ankles a few times one direction. And a few times opposite. And then hugging the knees up closer towards the chest, pushing the chest forward, shoulder blades back and down. We're going to rock onto the seat bones, balance on the seat bones, or on the platform between the seat bones and the 
sacrum, trying to reach the shins in the parallel with the floor. If that feels more comfortable, try to extend your arms forward with the palms facing towards each other. Gaze towards your big toes. Breathe, balancing out the spine for five. Four, don't hold your breath, deepen. Three, two, one, exhale, feet down. Cross your ankles, roll forward into the palms and knees into the tabletop. Place your palms beneath your shoulders. So here we're going to move into the cat cow, but I invite you today not just do the movement up and down, but really feel the movement from the sacrum up to the crown and from the crown back to the sacrum. So as you inhale, tilting the, pul the pelvis forward, and then arching, moving the ribs down, sliding the shoulder blades together, chest forward, chin up. Exhale, chin in, rounding from the space between the shoulder blades, drawing ribs in, tucking the tailbone under, engaging the pelvic floor. You can move as slow as you need to feel this movement at least five times. Inhale, forward, and exhale, back. Continue. You challenge yourself to move slower to experience each part, the pelvic area, low back, mid back, upper back, neck, and then reverse neck, upper back, mid back, low back, and pelvis. Belly is never staying relaxed, it's always slightly engaged, so there's some kind of connection, some kind of support for your low back. After next exhale, come to the neutral back, right palm, each finger press down, with the left palm grab your left shoulder and circle your left elbow forward. Back. Place your left palm down, press each finger down, right palm holding the right shoulder, circle forward. And back. Place your right palm down. Now working with the legs. You're going to begin working with the left leg. Try to balance in the middle, ribs pulled in, pick your left knee up and starting to circle. Now, no need to rush here. I want you to really draw the big, smooth circles. Don't hold your breath. And reverse. Place your left knee down to the floor. Find the center for a moment. Now imagine there is a wall right next to you from the right side. You're pressing in this wall, so there is no way you can go too far to the right. I'm going to pick your left knee to the side, making 90 degree angle between right and left side. Left foot stay flexed. Exhale, lower your left knee, so your left knee hover above the floor. Let's go five up, down, four up, down. Three up, down, two up, down, one up, look to the left, extend your left leg, press your left foot down, come all the way up, make sure one line between the right knee and left toes, reach your right arm up and lean all the way to the left, stretching the whole right side of the body. Inhale in the center, palms down to the floor, pick your left leg up, now trying to keep the left leg straight and move it all the way back and down to the floor. Inhale, arch, look forward, exhale, round your spine. Neutral back, work with the right leg. Pick your right knee up, right foot stay flexed and circle your right leg. 
Try to not lean too much to the left. Stay in the center. Reverse. Mm -hmm. Right knee goes down. Now again, center yourself, working with the abduction of the hip. Right knee goes to the right, making 90 degree angle, and then hover above the floor. Let's go five up, down, five, four up, down, three, down, two, down, one. Look to the right. Extend your right leg, right foot press down, lift up. So here we're shifting the attention into the chest, the thoracic breath. Left arm come up and lean all the way to the right. Exhale, come back. Palms go down. Try to pick your right leg up without bending, engaging the right thigh, pulling the right kneecap in. And extending the right leg back and knee down to the floor. Inhale, arching. Exhale, rounding. Coming to the neutral spine, walking the palms further forward, shifting the hips back and up. Downward facing dog. If you need, add on some movement. Or just at the same time, both heels press down towards the floor. See, feeling the line from the palms through the elbows into the shoulders, through the spine into the seat bones. And for the seat bones on the back side of your legs, all the way down to the heels. Take one more inhale, look forward, and walk all the way forward to the top of the mat. You can bend your knees a little bit if needed, grab your elbows, and pull your forearms down towards the floor, relaxing the head, passive stretch for the spine. Release your arms, slowly one vertebra at a time, rise all the way up to the standing, roll your shoulders back and down, feet together, toes relaxed, Tadasana. Close your eyes, send your attention, the inner gaze to the space between your eyebrows. Once again, just for a moment here, notice all the alignments in the body from the feet all the way up to the crown. With the next inhale, open your eyes, reach your arms up, drawing the ribs in. Urthastasana. Utkatasana, bend your knees, press through the heels, scoop up the belly, relax the shoulders. One inhale here. Exhale, fold over your legs, Uttanasana. Inhale, slide your palms on your shins, look forward. Urtva Uttanasana. Exhale, step back into the plank pose, high push up. Each finger press down. Now shift forward, point your elbows back. You can drop your knees down if needed. Go to Chaturanga or all the way down to the floor, whatever works. If you're in Chaturanga, lower yourself all the way down. Point your feet back, shoulders up towards your ears, back and down, Bhujangasana, Cobra Pose. Exhale, press back into your knees, back into the downward facing dog, Adha Mukha Svanasana. With the next inhale, reach your right leg up. No need to go too high right now, so the pelvis stay neutral. You're not twisting. Exhale, right foot goes back to the floor. Inhale, left leg rises. And goes down to the floor. Inhale, right leg up. Now point your foot, bend your knee, stack your right hip on the top of your left, twisting the pelvis to the right. Exhale, right foot goes down. Inhale, left leg come up. Twist your pelvis to the left. And exhale, step your left foot forward between the palms. Back foot flat, come up into the warrior two. Extend your arms to the sides, palms facing down, relax your shoulders. Once again, shifting the attention of the breath in the thoracic spine. So the belly is not expanding as you inhale, the belly stay engaged. Look to the left, left palm up, moving forward up and over, reverse warrior. 
exhale your variation of side angle, left elbow on your thigh or left palm from the inside of your left foot. You can use the block if needed and cover yourself up with the right arm. Breathe here. Strong legs. Inhale, pull back up, left leg straight. Palms on the hips, turning towards the left foot, stepping the right foot closer, feet in the parallel with each other. Slightly arch. As you exhale, fold over your left leg. If you need, use a couple of blocks and try to stretch your palms on the blocks or down to the floor in front of your left foot. And slowly lengthening the spine along the left leg. Inhale, bend your left knee, step back into the downward facing dog. Lift your heels, roll forward into the plank pose. Point your elbows back, shift forward, lower yourself slowly, slowly down to the floor. Point your feet, roll your shoulders back and down, cobra pose, bhujangasana. Engage in the core, shifting back, downward facing dog, adha mukha svanasana. With the next inhale, lift your left leg up, heel reaching up towards the ceiling. Exhale, place it down. Inhale, right, right leg comes up. Exhale, down. Inhale, left leg up, point your foot, open the left hip. Exhale, down. Inhale, right leg up, bend your knee, open the hip. Exhale, step your right foot through. Back foot flat on the floor, we mill your arms up, warrior two. Once again, pay attention to the thoracic breath, the breath in the chest. Engage the glutes. Right palm up, moving forward, up and over, reverse warrior. And exhale your variation of side angle. I invite you to, even with the help of the block, bring the palm from the inside of the foot and extend the left arm above the head. Strong legs, inhale, come all the way up, right leg straight. Palms on the hips, shift to the right and step your left foot closer. Slightly arch, exhale, folding over the right leg, either palms on the blocks or palms on the floor. Inhale, bend your right knee. Stepping back into the downward facing dog. One more vinyasa here. Inhale into the plank. Exhale, lower down. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, down dog. Up to three breaths here. If your heels are still lifted above the floor, you can continue walking at one place. If the heels already press down, engage the legs like you want to stretch the yoga mat, make it wider with your feet. Next inhale, look forward, bend your knees, step or hop forward. Inhale, half lift, exhale, fold. Bend your knees for the chair pose, Utkatasana, and come all the way up, Tadasana. Step wide with the feet open wider than your shoulders. Triangle pose. Turn the left foot out, right foot in, palms on the hips. Continue stretching the lateral lines of the body. Shifting the hips to the right, keeping this left knee engaged. So already here, look, if the knee buckles in, that's what also can be happen when you do the Upavishta Kanasana, our key pose today. So already here, learn to bring engagement in the thigh, pulling the kneecap in, and do the micro bending. It doesn't mean you folding in the, with your knee bend. It might be invisible. You only feel that you do this micro bending inside of the knee. Only you can feel it. 
shift, left palm go either on the shin or once again, since you have blocks today, see if you can place a block from the outside of your left foot and encourage yourself to open up. Look up. If that's available for you, extend your right arm above your ear. Re-extend your right arm up, palm to the hip, look down. If you had a block, grab a block with you, coming all the way up and changing the side. Right foot out, left foot in, block goes from the outside of the right foot. Again, bend your knee a little bit, engage your right thigh. Shifting the hips to the left, leaning to the side, and using the block as a support, opening up with Hita Trikanasana. Maybe left arm extended. Leave the block, come all the way up, and exhale, feet in. Feet in the parallel with each other. Look down to your feet, heels in one line, moving in Rudrasana. Opening the feet to the side in 45 degrees. Palms in front of the chest, press your thumbs into the chest. Once again, we're shifting the breath into the chest. Engage the lower third of the belly. Sliding down towards the floor till the thighs will be, ideally, in the parallel with the floor. Relax your face. Stay here, five, four, Three, two, one, come up. Interlace your fingers, stretch your arms up, palms facing up, relax your shoulders. Exhale, slide down. Breath in the chest, five, four, three, two, one, come up. Change, place another pinky on the top, stretch your arms. Exhale, slide down. Five, four, three, two, one. Come up. Turn the feet in for Prasarita Padatanasana. Now, we're first going to go in the parallel with the floor. Again, try to feel first, kind of move the pelvis only, forward and back. Curve in the low back and then flat low back, forward and back. The next time your hips going back, you already feel that help you to arch forward and then move. In the parallel with the floor, if you had a block, one block in front of you. Beginning with a twist. Right palm on the block, press your left foot into the floor strongly as you twist. Maybe left arm can be extended up if it's too intense. Place it on the sacrum. Exhale, left palm down, change. Press away from the floor, from the block. Press your right foot into the floor, right arm up. Exhale, come back. Now walk with your palms as close to yourself as possible, ideally pressing the palms in one line with the feet. And you kind of press your press the floor away from you to go closer to the legs. Now, legs is not relaxed. Once again, engage your thighs, kneecaps pulled in. That's very important. That will be useful in the key pose today. And try to point your crown down in between the palms. Breathe. Inhale, half lift. Now, two options. Option one, palms stay on the floor. Option two, hug your shoulders. Starting to bend one knee after another, shifting from side to side. If you're hugging your shoulders, make sure you're not moving up and down. You're moving in one line from one foot to another. Control over the movement in the hips.
Next time you're bending your right knee, turn back to the beginning of the mat and step back into the downward facing dog. Inhale, roll forward into the plank. Lower yourself all the way down. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, downward facing dog. Up to three breaths. Inhale, look forward. Bend your knees, step a hop forward, feet together. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, fold. Bend your knees for the chair pose. Reach your arms up. Come all the way up. Tadasa. As a compensation in the final standing pose, I'm going to turn towards you. We're going to do Garudasana. Only with the legs. Palms together. Bending your knees, placing the right thigh on the top of your left. If possible, right foot goes behind your shin. Trying to line up one hip with another. Inhale. And exhale, sitting deeper, squeezing the thighs together, trying to shift the shoulders back. So we're more in the upright position today. Inhale, come up. Feet down, reach your arms up, stretch the whole body. Exhale, palms together, bend your knees, left thigh on the top of your right. Left foot goes behind your right chin if possible. Squeezing the thighs. Breathing. Coming up. Beautiful. Inhale, reaching the arms up. And one more time, vinyasa. Exhale, fold. Inhale, half lift. Exhale, step back into the plank. Lower down. Inhale, cobra. Exhale, down dog, up to three breaths. Drop your knees down, sit back on your heels, forehead down to the floor. Your choice, you can keep your elbows down on the floor for the more relaxed position, or keep your elbows above the floor for the more active stretch. Rest here for the few breaths, noticing how the body warmed up. We're ready for our preparation. A few exercises from kin stretch to isolate the different joints in the body to eventually build the uh, union, right, between those joints, between this, uh, to build this awareness of kinetic chain and go into our final pose today. So let's do up to three breaths here as well. Just like we did in the beginning of the class full breaths right from the bottom to the top inhale and from the top to the bottom exhale one more inhale look forward walk your palms towards yourself extend your legs in front of you and we begin here with making a um, 90 degree angle with the both legs. So let's begin the, with the right leg in front and left leg behind. So as you placing your legs, making sure that the foot flex, so 90 degree angle in the ankle and 90 degree angle in the knee on the front leg and on the back leg as well. You maybe notice that the left hip is lifting up from the floor that's okay but the more important we're trying to turn the torso so it's facing towards the right leg so we begin lifting up and down one piece at a time all your attention to the left foot right now you can place the blocks underneath the palms if that feels more comfortable more stable with an inhale try to reach the left foot only up and exhale, place it down. If you feel too much movement happen in the hips, you can even place your palms on the hips and then lift the foot up and down. So count for yourself 10 times. Here, more important is no rush. If you're trying to rush for the movements, the more likely you will start to compensate. If you feel it's too easy, more likely you're compensating. We want to get this awareness and the isolation each piece, each chain uh, in the kinetic chain, each piece in the kinetic chain. 
So I'm finishing up. I'm counting for myself. Okay. Left foot go down. All attention into the left knee. Left knee up and down. Ten times. Pay attention to your breath. Pay attention to the movement of the whole body. Once again, if it's too much of the wobbling, palms on the hips to control. Count your 10 times. And then rest. The next two, a little bit more tricky. We're working with the front leg. The first one is easier. Right knee. Right knee up. Right knee down. All the way down to the floor. Ten times. Mm -hmm. Finishing up. And now the trickiest one is the right foot. So here two options can be happening. Option one, the whole structure will come up. Option two, nothing will come up. So that's okay, both of it. Only just your effort of this front foot to come up will be enough to work our way through, the, through this exercise. Let's go, 10 times. Up and down. When I did this exercise first time, I thought it's impossible to lift the foot. <laughs> but believe me, everything is possible. There's a popular saying in Hindi called Sab Kuch Milega, which translating everything is possible. Mm -hmm. So if you feel the cramping, which very often happens here, especially if you're doing it the first time, that's okay. You can come out of the shape, massage those areas which feels like cramping and discomfort and then come back into the pose. All right, slowly bring your left leg back. Hug your knees, round your spine, relax a little bit, and we're shifting. Now left leg in front, right leg behind, but same shape. 90 degree in the ankle, 90 degree with the knee, same with the back leg. Fingertips on the floor or on the blocks. Let's go right foot up and down 10 times. Now you already know where we go. You can go with your own pace. You can even close your eyes. Sometimes it helps to tune in and to how the body move. What is the patterns of the movement? Okay, finishing up. Shifting attention, the right knee up and down 10 times. Mm -hmm. Finishing up, checking on the position, upright position, not leaning forward, not arching back, left knee up and down. The good practice also here to notice the response. Maybe there's a difference between right and left side. Trying to build the balance. Mm -hmm. Finishing up, and now the most interesting, the left foot. Either you're trying to lift or lifting the whole structure, knee and the foot. Let's go. It's just a little bit above the floor. Don't give up. Remember, just the effort is enough. If this shape exists in your head, it can exist 
and emb- being embodied through the physical shape through your body. Mm-hmm. And when you're done, both legs in front of you, rounding the spine, relaxing. And pull yourself forward and finally extending the legs 90 degree. So to begin with, let's keep those knees slightly bent, but the feet always flexed, toes always pointing up. Bring your right foot to the inside of your left leg. Turn yourself towards the left leg. Palms pressed down. Before you, the further you place your palms, the more complicated, the more challenging will be the next position. So try to keep them at first in the middle and then you can shift, make it easier, make it complicated. Palms press down. Now, to fold forward, it's not about flexibility, it's about the strength of the legs as well. So, with the next inhale, you press through the floor, rounding the spine, engaging the core, lifting the leg up and moving it from one arm to another, let's say five times. Four, three, two, one. Down. Now, left leg straight, inhale, slightly arch. And exhale, fold. Once again, if it didn't happen from the very first time, don't worry about this. Just keep working a certain effort, a certain idea in the head. Eventually, we'll give the results. With the next inhale, walk yourself up and change. Right leg straight. Remember, um, first we're going to keep a micro-bending, a bit of bend in the knee, palms pressed down and checking on availability of control the movement and the strength in the leg. Palm down, palms down, lift and move from one arm to another. Five, four, three, two, one. Straight leg, inhale slightly arch and exhale fold over the leg, relax your head. Inhale, walk up, and now extend the both legs straight. For those who are practicing for quite a long time, another check here to kind of to check the ability to control and the strength in the pose will be to lift the hips and lift the leg. Other side also you can try, lift, lift. So everything should be under control. Once again, as you fold forward, knees can be slightly bent, but feet always pointing up. Fingertips behind you, chest forward, slide your shoulder blades back and down. So when you're folding fi- f- here, you need to gain the control over the rotation of the pelvis around the femur bone. You're not folding from the rounded spine. You're not going forward here. You're going to work. So not this way, but you're going to work on moving the hips. You can isolate the upper body and the hips and move. So maybe you cannot see it um, very clear because the movement are not have not a much, not a big amplitude here, but just rocking on the seat bones. And next time when your hips going back, so the thighs are not rotating in, they actually rotating out. Palms down, maybe stay here. Or maybe with an idea, bringing navel down towards the floor, you're going to go forward. On the way down, you might rock a little bit from side to side, like you want to stretch the torso out of the hips. This is not a fast journey. It might take a while, but make sure you determine the right vector. So you're not trying to go down as fast as you can, but you rather work on stretching, on lengthening forward and then down. Legs strong, actively push your feet away. And let's spend here another three full breaths. Inhale, walk up and bend your knees. 
just a little bit to give yourself some rest. You can rock a little bit, knees in, knees out. So if you master already the Supavishta Konasana, this position, so it was in a position which was very similar to what I was showing, I'm going to give you one exercise which will help you to control the hips, to control the position, to own the pose fully. And if you're just learning, you're still going, and st you're still on your journey to this pose, you're going to repeat it once again. So for those who go deeper, please take a look. We're going to go in the same position with the legs wide, but now we're not going to help ourselves with the hands. We're going to extend the arms, maybe rock a little bit here with the hips, and then shift forward, and then strong legs, you're pressing, you're never letting your legs to relax, then you shift forward, shifting, 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 all the way down. Remember, you go in this position only if you're already on the floor without the block. Then you can use the block to deepen, okay? So if you're still learning, please don't, don't jump too quick into this exercise, okay? Let's try. Whatever you do right now, you inhale. And then as you exhale, you fold. Three breaths. Next inhale, slowly walk up. Slowly helping yourself with the hands, bringing knees to touch. Take a moment here, especially if you was doing this exercise with a block. Sometime you need a little bit of time to, to release. Compensation twist. Extend your legs forward, right leg bend, foot down. Option one, option two, bend your left knee for the deeper twist. Arthamatsindrasanam, uh, twisting to the right, left elbow pressing in the outer right knee, looking behind the right shoulder. So this is a compensation for the spine as well as for the hips. So pay attention on this kind of adduction, right? Bringing the right hip towards the center. Inhale, come back, change. Left foot on the floor, right knee can, right leg can be straight. Twist. Right elbow pressing into the outer left knee, look behind your left shoulder. Come back. Make your way down on your back. Feet in the parallel with each other. Heels as close to the pelvis as possible. Uh, we moving in Seto Bandhasana, shoulder bridge. Engage the glutes, reach the hips up. Option, interlace your fingers. Move your shoulder blades towards each other. Open the whole front side of the body. Breathe. Again, shifting attention towards the chest. Exhale, release. Knees towards the armpits. Grab your big toes. Happy baby, that's the final position for today. So as you see today, we had a very strategic practice. So this kind of practice is a really encourage you to, the slower you move, the better. The more time you have to acknowledge what you're actually doing to Observe how the body moves, like you would be observing your body from the side, right? From the outside of your body experience, kind of, right? So you're not looking here for necessary um, something we would call stretching or working out. That's a very, very precise work. And notice uh, what the patterns we have, as I mentioned before, how we compensate the movement and how we can bring more mindfulness, more awareness in our movement. Release. Moving in Shavasana.
extending the legs, extending the arms with the palms facing up, and closing the eyes. Softening, relaxing completely into the floor. Eyes closed. With each exhale, body becoming softer, heavier. All sounds and distractions around you starting to become quieter, like the moving far away from you. Leave all of these distractions on the background of your practice and go within, observing the work that's been done, observing which muscles or which areas of the body feels the most. And if there is any tension there, consciously, willingly letting go.
Next inhale, slowly start to come back. Squeeze and release the toes. Squeeze and release the fists, the hands. Stretch the arms up, point to your feet. Exhale, hug your knees up into the chest. Roll into the left side, keeping the left arm underneath your head as a support as a little pillow and whenever you will be ready come all the way up into the seated position same position we started the class today bring your palms together towards the heart one more time, realize this state of mind, a complete total awareness, a total presence within your body in the moment here and now. And try to keep this sensation, try to keep this attention even after this class will be over. Knowing that you have this ability, ability it's always within yourself. Warm up your palms. Bring your palms up into your eyes. Blink your eyes to open. And palms back to the heart. Thank you so much, everyone, for your attention. Thank you for your practice. And I see you in the next lesson.